and danced with Colin, I wouldn't have said very many. But get up, they did, one by one by one. The first person joined him uh, to, to get up and dance, and then the second person joined him to, to dance, and then uh, soon there was a small dance party uh, that was forming uh, to dance. And eventually it turned into this full-blown social contagion of dancing that looked and ended like this. Pockets of obesity and pockets of less obesity. 
And this isn't a new idea. I mean, this quote was originally attributed to Robert Burton in the 1500s, but it's even older than that because before Robert Burton, it was uh, it was Aristotle who was saying that people love those who are like themselves. And before Aristotle, it was Plato who said that similarity begets friendship. And just to prove to you that a long line of worthy scholars have made this argument. So Plato says similarity begets friendship, and just to prove to you that a long line of worthy scholars have made this argument, it was my mom who said that hanging out with a bad crowd would get you into trouble. <laughs> um, she was none too pleased at the dinner table when I quit that she might have gotten the causal structure of that sentence wrong. Um, so, So Slate ran an article that uh, was called Everything is Contagious, and ironically it was about the contagion amongst academics to publish contagion studies. So we have studies <laughs> that, are, uh, that, are, that say that obesity is contagious, and happiness is contagious, and product adoption is contagious, and cooperation is contagious, and loneliness is contagious, but there are lots of alternative explanations for these correlations. The homophily is one, but also friends tend to be exposed to the same external stimuli, which are confounding factors. And this is important for two main reasons. The causal structure of the underlying dynamic process of a spread of contagion through a population implies different diffusion properties for the behavior, where is it going to go next, and so who should we target, and different optimal containment and promotion policies. And so uh, we studied uh, uh, some data from Yahoo which was 30 million people interacting daily over instant messenger. And we combined this data with the adoption of a new product that was uh, launched by Yahoo. And we did this to devise new statistical methods to separate peer influence and contagion on one hand from homophily and uh, confounding factors on the other hand. And what we found in this study was that if we had attributed uh, all of the correlation in this new product's adoption amongst friends to influence and contagion, we would have overestimated peer influence and contagion <coughs> by 700%, and then 50% of the peer influence, the perceived peer influence, was really just observable homophily, similarity in pre preferences between, between friends. Okay? And I show this result to my friends, and they're like, wow, Sina, you are a really big nerd. Like, who cares about that? 700%, 50% sounds really scientific. And they say, why should we care? And I tell them, well, the answer to that question is going to tell you which policies are going to succeed and which policies are going to fail. So let me give you an example. If I told you that whatever behavior it was, say it was product adoption or AIDS testing or obesity or smoking cessation, I gave you a data set and I said, there's a correlation amongst friends uh, in this behavior, smoking, taking AIDS tests or whatever. And in one case, I said 90% of it is because of peer influence and 10% of it is because of homophily. And in the other case, I told you, well, 90% of it is because of homophily and only 10% is because of peer influence. In the first case, you would want to do a peer-to-peer -peer intervention where friends try to get their friends to change their behavior. But in the second case, what you want to do is segment the market or the population along observable demographic uh, statistics or characteristics and then target the people that are likely to engage in the behavior with messages or incentives, et cetera. So I study the process of contagion and also the incentive programs that can spread or contain a, 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 a contagion. So the last study was limited for two reasons. The first is that it was observational data on a product that existed. And the second was because the holy grail of understanding causality is really randomized experiments. Okay? So we created a platform for conducting randomized experiments among millions of people, and we asked a more advanced question, which was about viral product design. Forget adding a viral marketing plan on top of a product. Can we design the product itself to go viral so that it's more likely to be shared amongst friends. And what we found was that by adding a few very simple features, we can increase product adoption by about 400%. And we studied two features in particular, personal invitations and passive awareness. And personal invitations, think about that like half of the room I allow to invite people to TED next year, and half of the room I give them t-shirts that said they went to TED, which you know basically shows that
a, you know, it, it's, it's about awareness. Well, we found that, as you might expect, the, the personal invitations were more persuasive, about three times as effective per message. Okay, and so at this point, we're thinking invitations are the way to go. And yes, they doubled the contagion nearly in the population, but it was actually the passive awareness campaign that created the most uh, additional adoption of the behavior. And the reason was because more people saw that message, even though the message was less effective per message. But it's even more complicated than that because personal invitations, when the people that you personally invite to the behavior join you in doing it, you're less likely to turn away from the behavior. You're more likely to stick with the behavior. So in, talk, in talking about engagement over time, personal invitations were more effective. And in fact, we found this really interesting result, which is that peer adoption creates engagement, which creates peer adoption, which creates engagement. So as my friends join me in the behavior or the product, I am more likely to continue to use it and not to leave it. And then I'm likely to invite more friends, which causes more peer engagement, which causes more friends, et cetera. And when I show this result in audiences like this, I can immediately pick out the marketers because they start to like sort of lean forward in their seats. <laughs> Sir, I think you have a little bit of drool right there. <laughs> but it's not just about products, okay? Because we are also applying the same exact science to spreading HIV testing in Africa. Because people tend to trust their friends in taking advice about what to do. Um, and so, and so we conducted a, a final study about susceptibility to influence because it's not just about who's influential, but it's also about what type of are likely to be susceptible to influence. And we did this uh, amongst 1.4 million people on Facebook, and here are the results according to what your relationship status is. So single people are more susceptible to peer influence than people who don't report their uh, relationship status. People who are in a relationship are even more susceptible to peer influence than people who are single. People who are engaged are even more susceptible to peer influence than, than people who are, who are in a relationship. And people who are married are apparently not susceptible. <laughs> um, and if it's complicated, you're apparently the most susceptible. <laughs> and this is not only important for marketers, but it's also specifically important to some people that I care about. Because as we speak uh, today in St. Simon's Island, my very close and dear friends, uh, Stefan and Dory, literally as we speak, are, are getting married, literally as we speak. Uh, and in addition, today is a very special day for me because it's my mother's birthday. And I want to thank these three people for giving me their blessing to be here with you today. And I want to thank you all very much at the same time for your attention.